the Hegler Karras Mansion in LaSalle, Illinois, the walls can gleam only whispers of the remarkable lives that inhabited this six-story home. The mansion is located next to the family's Matheson and Hegler Zinc Company, at one point the largest zinc producer in the world. The bottom floor of the mansion housed the early years of the Open Court Publishing Company. The Hegler Karras Empire boasts the ambitions of Edward Hegler and Paul Karras. Perhaps little known, yet still remarkable, is the life of Mary Hegler Karras, wife, mother of six, board member, eventual president of the Zinc Company. She was the first woman to earn an engineering degree at the University of Michigan. When she pursued graduate studies in engineering at the School of Mines at Freiburg, Germany in 1885, she was ultimately not awarded a degree because of her gender. Nevertheless, Mary's devotion and ambition to pursue a career in engineering she did not regret. In a letter to her sister Gisela, Mary avows the value of a woman's education. You asked me in your last letter, which was forwarded to me in Berlin, what ideas I could give you in regard to your graduating essay, A Woman's Education. Probably you have it entirely written by this time, but perhaps a few words would not come too late. She must have a knowledge of practical things, simple business affairs, that she can, in any case, be independent, should it be necessary, and also should she have some vocation to fall back upon. But there she should remember that whatever she does must be well done, thoroughly done, and that is one of the principal things to be sought after in her education, that her time, her ideas, her accomplishments, her knowledge be principally in one direction, so as not to be splintered and incomplete. That always gives an independence of ideas and thought to be gained in no other way. Mary Hagler was wed to Paul Karras in 1888. They raised six children. Not only was Mary a well-educated and loving mother, she ran the M and H Zinc Company after her father's retirement, presided over the open court after her husband's death, and led philanthropic projects for the American war effort of World War I. But she should not forget a woman's greatest happiness is in her home, her family, and seek to develop herself as perfectly as possible for that, keep herself in robust health, and be able to bear what she may be called upon, keep her hands skillful and busy without spending her time upon trifles. Ever independent, never vain, Mary Hagler Karras offers a lasting thought for young girls who pass the mansion every day on their way to school. Whatever she does must be well done, thoroughly done. In that way, you make the future a better, more welcoming place. When Mary passed in 1936, the Open Court Journal stated that her life was rich in good deeds and kindness. She has departed, but her spirit remains a living presence and priceless source of inspiration to those who have had the good fortune to have known her. Seldom was a woman more worthy of the tribute we pay her.